Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today is harvest day, and so I thought I'd run through one quick time how I do my harvesting. I know I've done it once before. This one's going to be pretty short. I've done most of the harvesting already. I just was going to chop through my process so that you didn't have to hear all the noise of the bag as I'm sifting my castings and everything. So I was just going to talk through my method of how I sift the castings. But I come across something else as I was doing this that I wanted to share with everybody. Just a little piece of knowledge that a lot of you might be interested in. So let me just show you as I was sifting or as I was going through and getting my castings I noticed see if I can get focused in you see this all these they're everywhere and they was getting stuck to my hand and everything they're all over the place what that is is cocoa coir coconut coir and the worms cannot eat the coconut coir so when it comes time to harvest you end up with a bunch of coconut coir in your castings which is fine I suppose if that's what you like if, if you don't mind that I don't really care but I won't be using coconut coir anymore because I don't like things in my worm bin that my worms can't eat I don't I don't know why I'm just picky that way it's no big deal but I did want to show show you guys I'd heard someone else say that once before that worms cannot eat the coconut coir and I didn't necessarily disbelieve him but, but now I know for sure that he was correct and uh, my bin was littered with the coconut coir I used you know, luckily I didn't use too much, but every bit of it that I put in here is still here. So, to get to my my process of of collecting my castings, I've got my shredded paper already made up and in that bag, and it's been in there for a couple weeks. It's got a little bit of food in there, some castings, some coffee, all mixed together ready to go so that once I get my castings harvested I can mix that in there with the remainder of the castings this was full and with this light I use the light harvesting me method and just kind of forces them down and so I can take everything that's on top and I sift so I take all the stuff that's on top and throw it in into my colander put it down into the bag and sift it and then all the little goobers and gobbers and balls go into this other bin of mine so that if there were any worms or uh, cocoons or anything it's all safe there in another worm bin and now I'm down to the very bottom so I've really only come across Maybe a dozen worms that I've had to pull out of the colander as I was sifting. And I just throw them in this corner. And that's where any worms I come across in here, I just would toss them into this corner. And this corner is where all the worms are. As I get the dirt off the top here. You can see that they went down pretty deep and that's usually what happens is they'll go down deep enough for you to get a good layer each time around and hello wormies and so I try to just get them off into a corner and just take everything off the top and if you, if you don't sift like I do all this can just go straight into your your keep bucket or bag whatever you keep them in and you know no sifting required I like the fine stuff you know once once I sift it you end up with this really nice fine beautiful castings these castings 
littered a little bit with coconut coir, but that's fine. Um, I my goal is to sell a little bit of castings to friends, family, that kind of thing. And so I don't want to have a bunch of littered seeds and stuff in what I would sell them or give them. So all the trash ends up over here in this bin. And I don't know if it's focusing good enough where you can see that little mountain. I have kind of a little pile of all the little marbles that you get whenever you sift. And it's just stuck together castings stuck together because of food bits or sometimes it's just moisture itself that causes it to clump up and so I just separate all that and it can get fed back to the worms again and get broken up a little better but I feel like that's down it's down to about nothing and I feel like that's a good amount of castings to start start the new bin off with by doing it this way, I don't have to separate the worms from the castings. They can just stay in the castings that they're they're used to. And they just go down a little deeper and they stay in there. I don't have to deal with the baby worms so much because they keep going down as well. And the baby worms, especially if, if you're sifting your castings, boy the, the baby worms are a problem they get stuck on everything and it, so you spend most of your time picking off the baby worms but this way they all just keep going down and they end up at the bottom of the bin and you know they all just stay happy in their own castings and since once we start a new bin anyway we add you know we start a bin with fresh paper or whatever we choose to use. I think most of us probably use shredded paper. I used to use shredded paper and shredded cardboard. Cardboard takes a little bit longer and so I don't use cardboard anymore, just shredded paper. Um, I vermicompost for the castings and so my goal is the largest production of castings with the worms that I have so uh, I try to keep things that take a long time to compost out of my bins I'll put some in sometimes at the very beginning of a bin like let's say like a corn on the cob or avocado seed maybe in the very first weeks of the bin but otherwise I don't just because I don't like dealing with long composting items and when it comes to the bedding I, I choose shredded paper because it gets chewed up pretty quickly by the worms and so that's the stage I'm at is I'm going to dump in the shredded paper let me get this light out of my way let me put the light back up here so that we can see a little bit but maybe it won't be overpowering yeah. See if I can do this with one hand. I probably can. This is my not primary bin, and I'm trying to let it dry out a little bit. It has, it's really damp, and as you know, you can't really sift your castings when they're damp. If I didn't sift collecting that, I would do it the same way. Put the light on, just take off the very top each time and put into my collection bucket and it wouldn't matter so much that it was damp but even the damp stuff it's hard to get the worms to go down when the material is damp so I'm gonna let it dry off another week or so however long it takes it's believe it or not it's been drying off for two weeks now and it is still it's not sloshy and gushy but it's it's still sticky. It's not, it don't break apart. If I was to shake this in a, in the sifter or the colander, it would just ball up and I wouldn't even get anything out of it. So we'll let that one dry out another couple weeks. That'll give me time to shred some more paper 
get another bit started. So here's my paper. I started this two weeks ago. Put all my paper in this bag. Added a bunch of coffee, shredded paper. Not a bunch of coffee, just you want enough so that you can mix it in with the paper and the paper won't stick together as bad. And a little bit of castings in there, but not a whole lot because I, I know that I always leave quite a bit of castings in the bottom of my bucket to mix with the paper. And I could have took more of these castings, sift, you know, you could see that I can still get handfuls that don't have worms in it just by taking it off the top. But I like to leave a pretty good amount of castings in my new bins. That way the bins can get started off a little quicker. And it kind of gives the worms a nice safe place to go while they're waiting on the bedding to get exactly as they like it. Plastic bag noise, I'm sure it's annoying. So, there is some food in here that I put in when I made this material. And uh, so, basically, what I do once I get this in here is I'm going to mix all those castings and worms in all this material and try to get, get it broke up. As it sits in that bag, it kind of clumps up a little bit. But whenever I, I make it, I do try to make sure you can see that all throughout there is castings and see if I can get a focus. There's castings, coffee, stuff like that throughout. And that helps keep it from sticking together and clumping. And as I mix these other castings in, that will help as well. And that's another reason I leave a little more castings than what most people probably would. And that's just because I like to get it mixed in with the paper. And that helps keep the paper from clumping so bad. And since we always have to start our, our new bins off with a little bit of castings anyway, by just having them already in the bin ready to go with, with all the worms that I uh, use light to drive them down so all the worms stayed in their bin I just feel like it's the le least intrusive on the worms, and it sure makes things a lot easier for me. And now, I'll just mix the castings and the worms, and uh, all this paper, and Enjoy their new home. Well, that's all I really wanted to show you guys for today. I'll mix all this stuff up on my own without... You guys don't need to watch me stir up a bunch of material. The main thing I wanted to show you was that that coconut coir still in here after three months. The worms eat a little bit of the fuzzies off of them. And, or maybe they don't eat them. Maybe they just break down from the material. But... Otherwise, all the coconut coir is still in there. And the worms, they don't eat it. So, just a little something to know as you make your bins going forward. I don't know that that's a big deal, but 
just important information. Uh, from here, uh, I'll finish up this bin. I might decide what to do with this bin. This is my outdoor bin, normally outdoor bin. Last year it didn't make it outdoors very long. I screwed up, left the lid off of it in a rainstorm and it filled up full of water. I was able to get it drained fast enough. No worms perished, but it scared me. So I brought it inside and that was around fall time. And then it, so it was inside all winter as well. And there is a ton of worms in there. That's probably the best bin I have for population wise. It was started with just a couple hundred worms and now there's just thousands and thousands of worms in there. It's a, it's a really productive bin for worm population. But that material is a, about a year and a half old or so by now. Maybe a, eh, a year and three months probably. And it's just been eaten through and through and through over and over again. And those castings, they're getting, they're getting pretty sticky just from being so concentrated. And so... Even if I let them dry out a little bit, I don't know that they'll go through the sifter very well. But I'm going to have to harvest that. And when I do, I'm going to fill it to the tippy top with paper. And just see how long it takes them to get through all that paper. And I'm just going to, every month, every, well, maybe every week or two even, just top it off with paper for the first two months. And then let them have it the bin and see how long it takes it to take some get through all that paper last time I did this December 2nd is whenever I made the last new bin it and I made it it is about like this when I was done once the paper was damp and everything about this much paper and they uh sorry but watching where I had the camera pointed uh they got through all this paper last time by January 2nd there was no more paper in the bin so I added it again and it took them two months to get through that paper and to get through it enough times that it was good nice black castings and you know about by March 2nd I felt like it could be harvested and it was good castings so that's when I started prepping for the harvest and started drying off the bin. And now it's the 20th, and it's a harvested bin. So that was my time frame, and here's my my booty, I guess. Uh, this is a big old cat food bag. Of course, castings weigh a lot more than cat food does. But I would say that that's about 40 pounds of castings just from the one container and uh, got another container over there to do in the next couple weeks and then that one who knows that stuff's gonna be really heavy really dense but I don't know when I'm gonna get to that one anyway so that's the video sorry I kind of ramble but uh, that's all I need all I got so I'll see you next time there's no wrong way to do this. There's just your way. Uh, just wanted to show you my way. <laughs>